Hello and welcome to tutorial 74 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. And a member of this list asked me a question uh, about tutorial 71 and um, he wondered how would it be possible if certain events occurred to make the strategy pause for a period of time? Well, actually, we don't need to make the strategy itself pause, but what we probably do want to do is restrict its ability to get into new trades if certain things occur for a certain number of minutes. So what I've done in this tutorial is said if we get two sequential losing trades, so you can see here on the chart, we've got two losing trades, then we take a pause, which you can see is indicated by these red dots for a certain number of minutes before the program would then potentially start taking trades again. Now, you might not wish to set up, uh, set it up exactly in this way, but um, I just wanted to show you the way I would do this, and then you can probably apply it in other circumstances. So let me go back and just show you how I did this and uh, talk you through modifying the program. So I started with uh, strategy that we had in uh, tutorial 71 and uh, I've made this into a intrabar order generation strategy because we don't want to enter into bar we rather intrabar we want to enter the, the following bar if conditions exist and I've declared several uh, variables here in the program that we will be using as we go through the program and uh, incidentally I will be making this program available for download if uh, if you want to save yourself some typing so the first thing we need to do is store some variables in num I've called them num win uh, is equal to the number of winners sorry num win trades and um, the reason I've done this is because we're going to need to detect when that number has changed bar to bar and if we tried to do something like putting in square brackets like so and verifying it we'd, um, we'd very quickly get an error so what we need to do is store that into a variable which I've called num win and then we can look one bar back at what the value of num win was the previous bar and I've done the same for num break even and that's equal to num even trades and I've done the same for num called it num lose and uh, that is equal to num loss trades like so now essentially what I'm saying is if num lose is not the same as what num lose was the previous bar and we do that by putting num lose um, square brackets one then and then I've created a little counter called sequential looting losing sorry sequential loss trds and I'm saying that uh, if we've just had a losing trade, then we want to increment sec loss truds by one. Okay, so that's fine. That's just going to increment every time we get a losing trade. Now that is fine, and that's just going to keep on incrementing every time there's a losing trade. But what we need to do is reset it if there is a winning trade or a break-even trade. So we can do that by saying if num win is not the same as num win the previous buy in other words just had a winning trade or num be is not the same as num be the previous bar and uh, again if we've had a break even trade then what we want to do is reset the sequential losing trades to zero like so okay so we're now keeping track of our losing trades and um, what we want to do is if this sequential losing trades gets to a certain number we're just going to call it two and I'll show you in a moment how you could make this into an input uh, which is very straightforward but if sec loss truds equals two now we're going to use something um, called pause and um, I'll explain that in a moment but we need it to be equal to false at this point then begin end and uh, what we need to do is capture the time that um, this has occurred because we want to pause our trading for a certain pause our trading for a certain amount of time so I'm going to um, set another variable called pause end time and that is going to be equal to now with uh, adding time to a 
or rather adding a number of minutes to a time we can't just add it can't just say t plus a number because time is uh, doesn't work in the sort of decimal way that normal numbers do so what I'm going to do is add 120 minutes to the time of the current bar using calc time which is a built-in trade station function and we're going to need to modify this in a little bit but just to show you basically where I'm going we then say if pause in other words we're already paused and t is greater or equal to the pause end time then begin end again and we're going to say we're going to turn the pause off and uh, we're also going to set the sequential losing trades to zero now that's fine but we could find, for example, if we were in a continuous contract that, say, uh, the time was uh, 11 o'clock at night, say 2300, we had two minute, uh, 120 minutes to that, we get to 0, 0100 the next day. And you'll see in, a say, a 10-minute chart that T immediately after the uh, 2300 would be greater than 0, 0100. So we need to sort of have some mechanism of checking whether the uh, time is actually in the next day we can simply do that by saying if I'm just going to copy this just to save a little bit of typing if that if that uh, pause end time is less than or equal to the time of the current bar then and I've created another variable here next day equals true oh and uh, one thing I forgot to do before was set pause equals true and then uh, what we need to do here is add another condition and say and next day equals false. Now at the moment the next day is going to be set to true and it's never going to be set to false so what we also need to do uh, just up here is if it is a new day so we can work that out by saying if date is not equal to date the previous bar then next day equals false okay so let me just go through and uh, explain that again so we're keeping track of our losing trades and we're saying if the number of losing trades is two and uh, we're not already paused then we find out what the pause end time is we check if it's the next day or not and then we set pause is equal to true I'm going to use that a moment in a moment to make sure we don't get in, into any new trades when pause is true. And then what we wait for, we're, we're paused and uh, we're waiting for next day to become false and uh, then T to be greater than the pause end time. If that occurs, then we turn the pause off and uh, we reset our sequential loss counter. Okay, so let's look at our entries now. And... Uh, what we want to need to modify this is just make sure that uh, we don't get any, any trades if pause equals false or rather we only get into trades if pause is equal to false and uh, I'm just going to put these existing market orders in a begin end statement like so now one of the things that I always like to do at least uh, when I'm debugging a program is create a little sort of visual cue as to what is going on so what we could do here is add additionally um, if pause then and I just want to put a little red asterisk on the bars where we're paused just so that we can see what's happening so we're going to do that by saying begin and uh, value 2 is equal to text new date time low going to draw an asterisk using the text new trade station reserved word and text set color so we want to make it red so it just stands out a little bit the reference is value 2 and uh, we're going to make that red like so and uh, furthermore what I want to do is just see a little counter so when the uh, the pause is equal to false I just want to see a counter of the uh, sec loss trades truds and uh, we can do that by going value one equals again text new date time low and then we want to put in a number here and we can't use a number in the text new function so we need to use num to str put in the uh, the value like so to zero decimal places need two round brackets there and I think 
we're done. So I'm just going to try and verify that, make sure we don't have any. Okay, I've got one errors because we put in an incorrect square bracket there. It should be uh, D open square brackets, one close square brackets. I'm going to try it again, F3, and uh, let's go and look at the chart and see if that is working as it was before. Okay, so we can see here we get into a losing trade and you can see the counter has gone to one as it should. Then we get into another losing trade and at this point we start uh, the pause so we can't get into any new trades for this period of time here indicated in the red dots and then we get into uh, a new trade later on. And you can see here that uh, we have a, a losing trade so the sequential counter goes to one but then we have a winning trade so it goes back to zero. So that seems to be working as uh, as we wanted it to. Now in terms of just improving this a little bit one of the things you could do is you might not want to hard code the uh, sequential trades to be equal to two. You might want to make that an input. If we wanted to do that we could just change it instead of two we'd say something like max sec trades like so and uh, we would then copy that move it up into the inputs and change that to two and just verify that again and uh, if we go back to the chart we should see uh, it functioning exactly as it was before but we've just changed now a, uh, a number that was built into the program into a an input and of course you could do that also with the number of minutes as well so anyway, I hope you might find this useful. Uh, I will make it available on the site. And one thing just to, to bear in mind about uh, this strategy at the moment, it doesn't have any entry bar protection on those uh, stops and trailing stops. And that's something that uh, we may look at in a future tutorial. So thank you very much for your attention.